Hi, hi, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Fixies and the host of the Sparkle and Thrive podcast. And we have a really exciting podcast for you. Um, so we're doing a little bit of a mini series. Uh, last week, I interviewed Fern Fuller, who is a Tech Fixie who's done the social media training. And then she went on to do Dream Builder. And then she went on to do our mastermind. And now she's got this really successful business. She's been able to pay back all of her pension fund that she lost overnight. She's a single mom. She's successful. It's an amazing story. And I I needed to follow it up with another amazing story. And I was driving in my car. I'd gone to go get dog food. And uh, I got back in the car. And just before you know, I got going, as you do, you check your messages. And I had the most beautiful voice message from Benita. And it, it just made me cry. I had to call her immediately. And I had to say, but you know, oh my gosh, I just have to talk to you about this. Tell me more. So Benita has done our social media training and she's also done our dream builder training. Yeah. And uh, she has an amazing story to tell. And really, I there's so much I want to unpack in the story, but let's just start by um, saying thank you, Benita, for coming onto the podcast. Now, this isn't your first time. This is actually your second time on the podcast. Uh, you had done the Dream Builder program and you loved it so much that we invited you to come on the, the podcast and talk about it. And you said it was a life changing program for you. Um, and you had no idea what was coming. No, no, no idea. not at all. No, I, I just assumed that uh, what I needed was to come up with an idea of, of my own business. Um, and I kind of did but come up with an idea of my own business in order to right all the wrongs that were going in my life. Um, and uh, I found it hard. I mean, I loved the Dream Builder because it just gave me the tools to reframe things and just keep being positive and not get deflated all the time. I mean, you get deflated for a moment, but you remember your tool and you bring yourself back up and you're in that right energy level to, you know, the different mental state to sort out the problem rather than the mental state that created the problem so so I loved that um and I think what happened uh you know I thought about interior design and I signed up for a course I love renovating homes and I thought well I'm good at that um I could do that it's quite different being good at something and actually turning it into a business um or or, or you know it is to live off the proceeds, you know, profitably, you know, and I needed to find money to, to live. Um, I'm divorced. I have two sons and one of them is about to reach 18. And that means no more child support. So all, all my bills and so on will be down to me as well as still providing a family home for my boys. So there was a bit of pressure there um, that was making me feel very uncomfortable. And for all those years while I've been a stay-at-home mum, um, I've thought the logistics of it all, it's impossible. How can I, you know, my husband was all, always away and then when he left, you know, it was just me. How was I going to do the school drop-offs? How was I going to do holidays? To the point that I just thought I can't do anything. And just something post-Dream Builders, it was, you know, you, you have to think, so what, what can I do about this? What can I, what can I lean into to, to make this better? And I don't need to know the how, just, you know, what can I lean into to make this better? And I just thought, well, I've been volunteering um, NHS. I have a kind of healthcare background. Um, and I've been volunteering during COVID. And that had been wonderful for me as a single person, because, you know, I'd had my connection all during that time that was incredibly lonely um an insular uh and i maintain that and you know funnily enough that's where i got my professional references you know from 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 volunteering there i got to know the organization really well i understood you know the the core values of dignity compassion i've forgotten them now but they are they are in my head uh so i really understood the organization so when i went on to the apply scotland jobs website like the first one of the first jobs i saw i thought i can do that and the great thing about the nhs jobs is that there are a lot of them and i know down in england perhaps there's a lot of negativity but it hasn't quite reached scotland yet so there's a lot of jobs so they are available but this particular one where they really wanted somebody with strong empathy and compassion and I thought, and you know, you've got a bit of an education as well, background. 
but no experience in the actual department that I would be in. I thought, I can do that. And that's got a salary. And that's what I need. I need a job with money outside the family life. And all the elements that stopped me in the past, well, they've got to change because I need to change. I need a difference in my life. I need to earn money. And so although these things prevented me in the past, they're still there, but they're going to have, maybe it's not for me to sort them all out. You know, maybe my focus was to, to find the job, apply for it, get an interview and then get a job offer. It's just, it's just amazing. It really is. And I've heard from them today. I start next Tuesday, subject to all the checks that they have to do. Um, uh, but I can't wait. I'm going to be part of a team. I don't have to buy any work clothes because I'm, I'm going to have scrubs. You know, all those things in the past where I thought, oh, God, I haven't got any money to buy work clothes. I don't need to. Um, and so it has all fallen into, into place. And it's, it's not a glamorous job, which I thought, oh, I really would like to have something a bit glamorous. But I know that even if I have a bad day for, for the role that I'll have, which is in the diagnostics team, uh, working in a multidisciplinary team, but mainly with, with the nursing and the radiographic department, for all people going through, and I've been through it, so I have empathy, uh, going through a cancer diagnosis and all the different screening checks that they, they do. And you can feel quite isolated I think people are busy and I think they're introducing assistants rather than trying to recruit more nurses or more doctors. They're introducing a different level of staff who actually assist with all the, the things um, as opposed to making a diagnosis and just explain what is happening, ask them how they're feeling and just make the experience so much better. Um, can't change the outcome, but you can make the experience so much better. And I can do that. And I can't wait to start. There will be challenges, um, but at the end of the month, I'll get a paycheck. And so I'm just... So, well, Benita, just for some perspective for people. Yes. Sorry. So what is, when was the last time you okay. had a paycheck, a salary job position? A salary job uh, 21 years ago. 21, well, yeah, 21 years ago. Um, and... That's a long time. And all sorts of false things conjure up in your mind as to what's happened in the workplace during that time. I mean, one of them we see was, oh, social media. I have no idea. Social media was never available or around when I was working last. Uh, and I just thought that puts me out of the job market. You know, how can I get back? Constantly looking for evidence of how I couldn't get back, you know. And that's where Tech Pixies, you see, um, that took away that fear that actually social media is not an essential thing to do a job, but it is a really useful tool, you know, in a job. Or if you are a social media manager, then of course it's essential. And but when you signed up for the social media course, yeah. you were exploring that as a potential career option. Yeah. And as you leaned into social media, you thought, okay, actually, I really like interior design. So you started a an account around um, des interior design and clearing the base. Yeah. yeah. So tell exactly. And now we talked about that a little bit on the last podcast, how you sort of were exploring that space with using social media. And you knew that if you wanted to launch a business in that area, that you would need social media skills to do that. So you, you leaned into that. And then actually, what one of the interesting parts about Dream Builder is you get a vision or a dream for your life, you know, it sort of comes to you. And then you decide, okay, is this worthy of my time, energy, effort, and money? And then you take steps towards it. So one of the things you did was you said, okay, I'm going to take steps towards this, making this more professional and going down that road. And actually, it was interesting because one of the conversations we had was around, well, actually, what I want to do has changed. And there was a certain almost yes. like uh, guilt or connection yes. to, well, what, what about that thing that I set out to start out to do that I'm now no longer doing? Let's, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I think yeah. it's important where we got to on that. If that was difficult for me because I had signed up my, my, for a, an interior design course and I signed up at a time before it became really expensive. So th there was a sense of urgency to get signed up. And my, my mum and dad, very sweetly, um, it wasn't too expensive, um, but they gave me the money. So, you know, it, um, that, what, what, you know there was pressure there to, to continue with it because I didn't want to let them down. Um, and I and I spoke to somebody very, very wise 
Um, and just said, I feel a certain amount of shame that I'm not completing these things um, as I intended. It almost feels that I'm being a bit fake, you know, that, oh, I'm so dead set on that. And actually learning to, and, and it's, I'm quoting Frozen, learning to let go and actually, you know, just say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who, who is being actually let down if you've recalibrated or changed paths? Who is being let down? And the only person being let down is the, the pressure you put on yourself. And you don't have to do that. So you can move forward. And uh, knowing that, you know, with the course, well, with, with Tech Pixies and the CPD, you know, I know how to, to put that together. And so when it's perhaps more, more relevant for me, actually, it's really essential in what I'm doing. I'll pull on that. I'll draw on that. I'll do that. And the interior design course, I remember you said to me, well, you own the content, you know, you can and you've got time if you want to, if it's going to make sense later. But there's something about now, which is just over there. It's with the new job you've got. And that's what you focus on. That's what's going to provide you with, you know, the things that you need. And those needs are not just finances. It's being in a team. It's being out of the house, you know, all these things, which associated with guilt you know how, how guilty i've got a lovely house that i put together and i want to get out of it you know i've got two great children but i want to get away from them it's so much guilt and just shifting that aside and just sort of saying it doesn't matter uh has been a huge burden removed and well, um, yeah one thing we talked about which i think is really important for people who are listening to this i've i've worked with a lot of women who want to one of their their ideas that comes to them is I want to start a business doing this thing that I love, painting, poetry, art, singing, whatever it is. And then when they start to actually do the work and, or, you know, it, it doesn't sort of work out the way they want it to work out. They sort of get exactly what you're saying. They have this little tiny bit of guilt around, actually, if I go get a paid job and I leave that behind, you know, what am I doing there? But one of the things that we've talked about, you and I have talked about, and I think it's important for people to hear who are listening to this, is that when we do have paid employment, we need creative outlets. We yeah. need a way to balance, you know, you're going into really uh, wonderful work, but it's also very intense work. And it's, you know, you're working with people who have acute diagnosis of cancer. And as you said, you've been there yourself, you know what it feels like um, to be in the other side. And, it, you know, but you're going to be you are going to be doing that on a daily basis, serving and taking care of people who are getting those diagnoses. You need a creative out. So one of the things we talked about was how do we how do we then use that creative outlet as a way to balance the things we're experiencing at work? And um, one of my mentors said that um, money is good for two things. It's it's there to help you be comfortable enough to be creative enough to give your gift to the world. And you know what's beautiful is this job actually does touch in on all of your values and it allows you to give your gift to the world in that sense. But then equally, when you know you've got a salary, you know you've got your bills paid, you know that you're doing something meaningful with the work that you're doing, you then have this creative outlet that you can tap into to then get a break from the work that you're actually going to be doing, which is going to be really amazing work, but also quite intense. So there's a a beautiful synergy here and you never know what's going to happen down the road. You've now got all of these different skill sets, all of these different tools that add up. And I just like the last time we spoke, you never could have predicted that this is what would be going on in your life. Um, and just like, you know, when we do a third call, I'm sure we're going to find out even more and discover even more that's happened for you. But what I love about this is that you had all the tools to help you uh, stay positive and stay focused and figure out what you were going to do next. Um, and I think it's important to recognize that, you know, this is someone who's come through the other side of a lot of these challenges, but you have faced challenges. You've faced divorce. You've faced being a single mom. You faced a cancer diagnosis. I mean, when you came into Tech Pixies, there was a lot stacked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I didn't, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to crumble, you know, I wanted to, uh, it's not what I wanted, you know, I wanted to have some positivity uh, and I didn't, you know, I don't mean sort of like, oh, well, always look on the bright side, didn't mean like that, but just sort of to not always be faced every day with, oh gosh, look, I've got, 
cancer and oh I'm single and I'm divorced and I'm you know never nobody wants me I didn't want to be waking up every morning feeling like that so I, I wanted something different because you know it is you know I do wake up now and even though there are some things that I think oh it's still the same I do think that oh it's another day to try and try and do something different and that's a nice way to wake up it really is it, I've, I've really learned it in that sort of short space of time that you know, it isn't perfect, but it's good, you know, and I've, I've, if you just get out there, if you just try things um, and not analyze it too much and just, just try, just try, you know, that's put your toe in the water and, and, and so on and, and connect, you know, just connecting with people. There are moments where in the past, I would think when I was feeling low that I would just hide because I didn't want to present myself like that. But actually, you know, when you when you connect with other people, you you don't you become more positive anyway. You know, it doesn't have to be well. If you want to hear yourself talking about doom and gloom, well, then you're not only hearing it, but other people are as well. But sometimes, you know, being out with other people, you you know, you just lift yourself and you 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 explore different things. So I I never thought all those things would happen and that I would you know rise above it and and get a job get a job um i mean you know the, the sense of rejection in my my sort of life was huge and so i suppose that probably prevented me from putting out lots and lots of applications because of you know i might get rejected rejected but if something feels right and you go for it you 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 can feel positive and feel that's a good fit uh and well, it did feel like a good fit and the interview was lovely and the people were great um, and nothing fazed me, and and so I thought I've got a really good chance here, and it, it happened. So yeah, I'm waffling. Well, no, you're not waffling. I just I have to tell you that message just completely made my day listening to that message. Oh. And, but I, well, let's talk about some of the tools that yeah. that helped shift um, shift this perspective. Obviously, you had the the Tech Pixies program. We have the life coaching in there. And in Dream Builder, we go much deeper. So we we talk about a, getting a sense of deserving, really believing that you deserve what you want to build in your life. We talk about um, uh, mindset of abundance, uh, going away from looking at the lack in your life and starting to look at the the all of the amazing things that actually are in your life. Um, and we we talk about the fact that you can't breathe yourself, you can't beat your own heartbeat. Um, we talk about waking up with uh, gratitude and the, that gratitude is the language of abundance, that we're connected to uh, that spiritual side of us through gratitude. And, uh, you know, I mean, if anyone doesn't believe that we're connected to better things in life through gratitude, just imagine, you know, if when, when someone's not been grateful to you for something you've done for them, are you willing to continue to work with them? You're just not. So it's one of those things where as we as we learn the language of gratitude, we learn the language of abundance, but we also talk about forgiveness. We do two whole sessions on forgiveness. Um, and that's a big one for a lot of people to even get through those two weeks. Um, and so it's really about, uh, you know, getting an idea of the dream, taking action steps towards that dream, but becoming emotionally connected to it and um, really believing it's possible for you. And then when you are at that place where you believe it's possible, you believe that it's worth your time, energy, effort, and money, and you're taking steps towards it, everything starts to align. And we don't, and we remove blocks and barriers um, that are in the way that might come with forgiveness or lack thinking, et cetera. So all those tools, there's, there's about 12 to 15 tools in there that we, we give you. What are two or three of the really big tool, the really big tools you took away from Dream Builder that really helped you to get into a place where this felt 100% like the right thing for you forgiveness um forgiveness was huge um learning to unchain yourself from a bad line of of resentment um was huge um and the ability and i think this is all with forgiveness as well the ability to experience the situation but look at it and reframe it has been huge as well so then you don't keep personalizing it so um and and it doesn't become oh that's 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 connected with me that always happens with me 
because you know you you won't move forward you you won't you won't find an alternative or you won't won't overcome that challenge so so the forgiveness thing and you know it's it's out it, it is spiritual and it's lovely and it is religious or however you want it to be but it's um it's so important you know even if if somebody has been unpleasant like i had a few uh, 21 years ago my my um, longer than that 23 years ago there was a job i was in and i moved office and the two women were very very toxic and prevented me from um having contact with clients and i was good with clients and i went away with that uh, you know i resigned from that job and got another one but i came away feeling um inadequate and you know and i i still had that chain of resentment you know which still linked me and when i was able to through the dream builders i was able to and that's going back 22 years that I probably would never have admitted to myself or wasn't really conscious that that's, that existed. But the dream builder made me realize, gosh, that does exist and that needs to be cut in order to move forward. So forgiveness is massive. And even when somebody has been unpleasant at work, not personalizing it and thinking it's because of something you've done, but just thinking, oh gosh, there must be something pretty bad going on in their lives for them to choose to react like that. Um, and you know what can you do to pacify the situation and walk away because you don't want to continually be the target so you know that's been a great thing so dream but even if there was just one I think forgiveness is is the huge huge thing and as you say there's a lot of stuff that people have buried and hence that two weeks you know can be quite tough and uh, digging deep but boy it's worth it if if you want to move on it really is worth it and then with the other one, oh, I just love that course. I really did. Um, and it's, I've still got it. I've still got the content. Yeah. So, you know, if anyone's thinking of doing it, it's not just 12 weeks. Um, and then and then, then you're done. You're off. You're on your own. It's, you know, it's there for you to sort of dip into all the time. It's, um, it was such a valuable investment for me. And I, I, I really loved it. Really, really loved it. I well, I, the other ones. <laughs> well, I, but forgiveness is huge. And I think yeah. people, in fact, I had someone once who, who was thinking about doing dream builder. And when we were talking about what was in the content that we did these two weeks on forgiveness, they were like, Oh, I I'm good on that. <laughs> I, yeah. I've done all. And I thought, Oh boy, <laughs> that's the sign you should be doing yeah. it. Right. One yeah. of the lessons about forgiveness is that it's never ending. Like you just forgive and you forgive and you forgive and you forgive. And, you know, it's it's not like suddenly, you know, you're done forgiving. It's sort of like you're, you're never done breathing. You're never done forgiving. It's, uh, you know. Absolutely. And forgiving isn't meaning, um, all right, I take it, walk all over me. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means, you know, um, oh, and some of the things we learned, wasn't it? The Greek for decide means to separate, you know, that, that to make a decision to separate yourself. So, you know, I, I learned that forgiveness does not mean okay whatever yeah that's fine you can behave like that walk all over me it doesn't it just means that you don't have to be linked to something that's bad anymore if it wasn't from yeah you so you you recognize a difficult situation but you know each person has to own a hundred percent of their reaction it's not you know one person owns a hundred percent so the other one is blame free you know whether it's a a relationship that just comes to an end or a work relationship that comes to an end um you know you're probably going to come into contact with those people in the future you know even with a work colleague as well so if it's possible to to forgive and to move forward in a way that um you can leave it with a positive experience if you were to meet them again or work with them again it's not like you know disaster coming back it's you know it it's you feel lighter so, I, well, I love what you just said about the Latin root of the word decide is desidere, which means to cut away, right? And that's what you're talking about. And so when you decide to forgive someone, you are cutting, and that's what you keep talking about, like cutting the chain. You're, you're, you're cutting away from the link that's connected to you. You know, and what we talk about in Dream Builder is where there is a jail and someone is being jailed, there is a jailer. You know, so if you're keeping someone, if you're holding on to that resentment, it's hurting you yeah. as, and probably often more than it's hurting the person that's being jailed. Right. Because yeah. um, they, they either know and, and don't care or they know and uh, they, you know, they haven't, they haven't apologized or whatever, because 
if they had, maybe you wouldn't be holding them in jail, right? Yep. But it's this concept that that actually, if I want to free my mental energy up to think about something else, because when you hold on to resentment, what happens is it never leaves you. It's always there. And like you said, you know, I, I, applying for a job, it's that fear of rejection. So then you don't apply at all because you don't want to get rejected because there's a part of your story that says I always get rejected or there's a part of your story that says that I never get the client facing job. So it's, you know, and, and then you get to that point where you just believe it's true because you say, I always get rejected. And that's one thing we talk about a lot at, at, in Tech Pixies, but also in Dream Builder is the I am statements that we say about ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and when we talk about brain priming and crafting a new way of thinking about ourselves and, you know, um, really creating an empowering statement about who you are so that you can put yourself forward for an application and you can walk confidently into the interview and you can walk confidently into the job and know that you have a gift to give to the world. So yeah, I love that so much. I love how you combined uh, the the act the, the act of making a decision, which is one of the very first steps in Dream Builder, that you're going to decide for this new life, which means you have to cut away from parts of the old life, right? And, and sometimes when you decide to forgive someone, that does mean that they're not part of your life anymore. But that doesn't mean that um, that that you, you didn't learn something from that experience, that you can't take something away and become, you know, have a different level of compassion or empathy. And I, I think it's so true that um, people are, you know, per, hurt people hurt people. So as we look at people that we have a lot of resentment for or where we've had a, a conflict with someone, if we can really step step away from it for a second and say, you know, number one, why am I, what's, what's, what am I, what does it say about me the way that I'm reacting to this? You know, what am I thinking about myself? But the other thing too is what's going on in that person's life? I love how you said that because it's so true that, that some, you know, the, the way someone treats you is a reflection very often of what's going on for them and not what's actually going on with you. Now, the way you react to them has a lot about the way that's going on with you, how you feel about yourself, you know, and I, I just read the book, The Light We Carry by uh, Michelle Obama, and she talks about her dad and her dad said, um, no one can make you feel bad if you feel good inside. And I really love that sentence. And I've said that to my kids a couple of times since I've read the book, just this concept that if we feel good about ourselves on the inside, then we have a much stronger ability to um, carry on when we get knocked down by other people because we know who we are. But if we don't know who we are, and if that's not, if that's not really solid in terms of what our values are or you know, who we believe we are, what our self image is, it can get rattled and knocked by the people around us when they say one thing uh, that can really throw us off. So that's really interesting that forgiveness was such a big one for you. I think, I think also just uh, not, not relying on evidence all the time, you know, just, um, you know, proof of, you know, part of my drive for the interior design was what proof have I got of something I'm good at? And actually just, being who you are, you know, having some good core values are important, crafting those. And, you know, the, the other thing in Dream Builders, it says, um, you know, there are five questions, aren't there? And the, the final question is, is it, um, oh, I don't know if it's the final one, but is, is this going to be good, not just for me, but also to the world, you know, that kind of thing. What, what, and, you know, I think if your core values are, are based around that, you know, um, that it's not just, it's altruism, isn't it? It's not just self attitude, you know, about me, it's about what, by being myself, how can that sort of help what's around me? Um, and I think not looking for evidence, because, you, know, you know, I learned the thing with the brain that the brain will look for evidence, if you have a feeling, oh, I'm not very good at this, the brain will look for evidence to prove that. Um, and so, you know, just not looking for proof of what you're good at, just just uh, or looking for evidence of, of what you're good at, just just being, just simply being and doing and being active. Um, that's a big thing as well. Yeah, and why not? Why, why shouldn't I have a job? 22 years, 21 years not working, why not? Whereas before I'd be thinking, oh my gosh, why, H how? You know, I'm unemployable. But just when you flip it and you just say, well, why not? You know, why shouldn't I be happy? 
or why shouldn't I enjoy that? Or, you know, just, and, and no, no evidence. It's just that it's, it's, there's no answer required. Why not? Just off you go. Why not? So that's, that was a big thing too. Um, not looking for proof all the time, you know, and who are you trying to prove it to? Sometimes you feel that you're trying to prove it to other people of your worth. And that just means, as you say, you're just going to get knocked again because you're looking for affirmation from other people, aren't you? Rather than having that lovely sense of, or, or a, a sense that you can always return to inside yourself, which is a sense of calm and that I know who I am and, and, and that's good enough. You know, that, that was a lovely, lovely thing. I mean, I make it sound so fluffy, but it's far more meaningful than that. Um, you know, the dream builder, you know, that feeling that I am enough and why not? I can do this. I love this. Elizabeth, who's listening right now, she says, I love this. Why not? And actually, Benita, that reminds me of a conversation I had with someone years ago, actually, because I was thinking about joining his company and um, and he's, he looked at me and he said, and I said that I believe that Tech Pixies could turn over a half a million a year. And you know that was what I thought we could do at the time. And, and anyway, and he said, why do you want to do that? And I remember him saying that to me. Why do you want to do that? And I was like, and I literally looked at him and said, why not? <laughs> yes. Why not? Why not? Why, who says a woman's business can't turn over a half a million or a million or whatever it is that you want to turn it over? Like, and I love there's a playfulness in that, you know, in that, in that why not? Because actually, um, as soon as we say why not, we, we sort of take off the limitations that we're putting on ourselves. Um, yeah. And uh, it's really interesting because I ran for a really long time. I ran, I've run, I've run multiple marathons and I've done uh, the Ironman um, Wales and I, I didn't get to do the running part on that, but I trained for the running part. I just was 53 seconds late in those cycles. So they wouldn't let me do the run, but I've, um, I've, done, I've been sporty all my life and uh, at, a, at a pretty high level. Interestingly enough, I, I've had this knee problem since about October, 2021, when I was training for the London Marathon. Uh, and I, I just didn't go get it diagnosed. I just knew I had a problem, but I just thought maybe it's in my head. Maybe it's, you know, maybe I'm just making it up. Maybe that, you know, there's nothing really wrong with me and I don't want to take up NHS resources and blah, 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 blah. Anyway. So for fast forward to almost a year and a half later, and it's still not better. I've taken time off. I've given myself recovery time mm. and I'm just not getting better. So I go in to get it. So I go to my doctor and I explain, well, maybe I'm perimenopausal and I've got joint pain and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, maybe he goes, just go get an x-ray. So he sends me in to get an x-ray. And then I get the results back that I'm like, um, I've got osteoarthritis in my right knee. <laughs> and of oh. course, I'm not making it up, right? It's, mm. it's, not, it's not in my head. It's an actual thing. And I thought, you know what? If I didn't have the Dream Builder tools, that would have been a crushing blow. You know, I really would have been. And so guess what I did? Because I'm a dream builder, because I'm somebody who believes that even with whatever diagnosis we've got, we've got a chance to do something amazing with our life. I went online and I said, okay, um, you know, what, like, what can you do? What sports can you do with osteoarthritis in your knee? And what exercises can you do? And I have one of my daughter's friends is an osteopath. And I called her and she's like, well, here's the deal. It's going to hurt for a little while, but if you can get through the pain and you can get your strength up, you're going to come out stronger than you were before. And there's a lot of things you can do. So it was amazing. Like you, you get a diagnosis that's not ideal and something that you don't necessarily want, but because we have a way of thinking that's, well, where's the greater good in this? What, you know, what am I going to learn from this? What am I going to take away from this? How am I going to, and actually at the end of the day, if I actually do what the that what everyone's recommending I do, I'm going to end up being stronger than I've, than I've ever been because that's, I've got to get stronger in order to compensate for the, the challenges I've got. So there's probably a lot of really good, that's going to, a lot of good that's going to come out of this. And now I don't have a choice. If I want to walk for decades of my life, I want to continue to walk and be healthy. I've got to solve this. I, I can't wait on this anymore. So, you know, I do think it's a way of thinking. And I really love that concept of why not. And it's really that concept of, you know, okay, so I've got, I've got some, some sort of diagnosis. I've got some sort of obstacle in my way. Well, how could we still do it? And, uh, you know, uh, propelling questions. I can't do this because I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because if we just change that, change that sentence and say, well, I could if, 
right? I can't because, yeah. but I could if. What what would what would have to be true for me to be able to do this thing? And that's a huge shift that comes out of the dream builder training. And um, anyway, I it, think. I think as well, you know, when you get a diagnosis or or where you get an obstacle, you know, another way, it's almost like rock climbing, isn't it? It's something you can hang on to in order to work out which is the next thing you're going to grab onto. It's not, it's not necessarily, I mean, we'd be naive to think that it was just a, a very predictable path going up and all we have to do is follow those steps and we'll get there. Um, no, it's, it's, it's rock climbing, you know, something comes along. You know, it could be a foothold, it could be a finger hold or something like that. And and it just means that you keep moving forward and you bounce off it or, you know, so it's not a disaster. And also, you know, with the why not thing, I mean, what do we tell our children? They've got no experience. They've got no evidence of being good at anything. And they say, I want to be an X, Y, Z. You don't go, what? You've got no experience. You can't do that. I mean, it's it's just remembering the the you know, the child inside us that, um, you know, you can do anything or you can, you can be anything. Or, yeah. I mean, for me, I used to think that, um, you know, I had to be something impressive and, and it doesn't matter anymore. I just think that actually the most impressive thing is to get by and be happy. Um, and if you can, you know, get by and be happy, then you've done really, really well, you know, with all the obstacles and all the chains of resentment. And I think at the end of the day, if you achieve that, you know what a blessed life you know it's great so that's where I'm at I'm not going to be prime minister um but you know I'm I'm going to have a job that I get paid um I'm going to feel good about what I do uh and and I've got the dream builder program that taught me all these tools to reframe things and just just be a bit calmer and enjoy life you know and and love the connections you have and that's where I'm at and so well I have to say anyone who's listening to this or watching this uh, I think you've achieved your goal. You're very impressive. Anyone who's come over the hurdles that you've come over and have the smile that you've got on your face right now, I want you guys to know, if you get a chance to watch the video, I want you to see Benita's face. She is radiating um, just this incredible sort of light of it it all worked out and she knows it's not over she knows she's still climbing that wall and there's still going to be obstacles but like she said every obstacle gives us a chance to raise our level of awareness and say okay what am i going to learn from this what am i going to take away from this how am i going to use this to serve the greater good and so in my view benita you've achieved that um wonderful a gift of of of, of, of happiness but also i think you are I think you're very impressive. I think anyone who's uh, who's gone through what you've gone through and still has a smile on her face and is ready to take on the next thing is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So thank you for coming on and sharing your story, giving us an update, uh, a part two, shall we say, um, as you've evolved uh, in into who you are and like uh, you know what you referenced were the five questions. So if you have a dream right now. And you're thinking about, you know, whether or not you should put your time, energy, effort, or money into it. Here's the five questions. Question number one, does it light me up? Question number two, is it in alignment with my core values? Question number three is, do I, is it going to require me to grow? Will I have to be uncomfortable in order to move through this? Um, because we know growth comes from being uncomfortable. It's what growing pains are all about. Uh, and then the fourth question is, do I need help from a higher power? And it's this concept of if I can do everything, if I know how to do everything I need to know how to do, it's not really a dream, right? A dream requires a bit of faith in that sort of higher power, uh, whatever you want to call it, God, the universe, life, um, because it's this idea that uh, I don't breathe myself. I don't make my heart beat. I don't fill my air, my lungs up with um, air. I don't pump the blood through my veins. There is something out there that's moving us. Even if we can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not out there. And it's it's that concept of do I want to trust my inner my inner the inner voice that says this is what I'm destined to do or these are the steps I need to take. You know, is it going to require help from a higher power? Do I need a coach? Do I need guidance? Do I need support? Um, and Benita got all of that. Mm -hmm. And then the last question, as she said, is, is there good in it for others? Really important to ask ourselves that um, because, you know, people underestimate that there is good in a lot of things for other people. You know, if you're in a partnership with someone and people see that partnership and they're inspired by that partnership, 
there's good in that for mm -hmm. others, right? So the, the last question is, is there good in, in, in for others? So if you can answer yes to all five of those, then really it's not about whether or not you're worthy of the dream, but it's whether or not the dream is worthy of your time, energy, effort, and money. And for Benita, it was, and that's why she became a dream builder. And now we're excited to see where the next chapter of her life takes her. Well, thank you, Benita. Have a wonderful, uh, keep us posted and, um, and good luck get with your, with your job. Yes. Can't wait to yes. hear how it goes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you.